In a recent live stream, I showed this device and said, this is one of the next things I'm going to take to bits. And I'd forgotten what its function was. I was under the impression that this was a device that's designed to go onto the side of circuit breakers as it is and actually trip them when you applied power for some sort of remote function that you could trip a breaker off. And I was saying, what would this be used for? And people were suggesting things like it's a last resort, you know, cuts the power if, uh, say, something like a motor drive fails and jams a motor on. And uh, it turns out that this is actually an over-voltage, under-voltage trip. So this actually connects to the bottom of the circuit breaker. I think I'd want it through other protection. But it goes to the bottom of a circuit breaker, and it measures the voltage. And if the voltage exceeds a certain margin or goes below a certain margin, it trips off and it actually turns off the circuit breaker next to it. And in a way, that's a, a kind of like a, a more versatile version of this. Well, actually, a less versatile because it trips it off and you have to reset it manually. However, these versions, which I'll look at some other time, uh, are auto recovery devices, whereby if these de detect a certain increase above the standard mains voltage or a drop in the mains voltage, like a brownout, they will, after a short time delay, they'll cut out and go into a standby mode until the voltage returns to normal and then they'll introduce a delay and then they'll come back on. In this case, it says recovery, recovery time about 60 seconds and, and this one's also 60 seconds. And it's also got a, a time delay to allow for voltage dips and fluctuations. This one has a delay of round about six seconds. And this one here actually displays the voltage, the mains voltage as well. The options you have here, this one is 32 amp, and I believe this has the, well, it's got the ingoing and outgoing terminals. This has probably got a fairly high current really in it. This one claims to be 100 amps. So this one, will it feels hefty. It's probably got a contactor in it, but this one, of course, just because it's designed to trip the breaker next to it, is really, really light. But I'll take a look at these ones some other time. I shall put them down out the way. I shall not put them in that. It's a Bluetooth device. It will probably power up and make noises. So this thing, I've been trying to guess what's inside it. It's very, very light. It's got, obviously, you, you set it manually, and then it's going to get a little thing. That, it's got this pin that interlocks to the breaker at the side, and also this interlocks to the lever at the side. And uh, when it trips, all it has to do with the magnet is just pulse that once, and it trips. And I've already measured the uh, resistance across this. It seems to be open circuitish. Uh, let's do that right now. Let's get a meter in and set it to a very high resistance of, where's my resistance range? Let's set it up to 20 mg. And I shall then put this across, but I'll try not to touch the leads here because, well, I'll touch one of them because uh, my fingers will interfere with the reading. But it's got a very high apparent resistance, and I get the feeling that it's a capacitive dropper inside, and that's why we're getting that sort of effect. So I've been trying to work out the circuitry, and I'd encourage you to have a wee think about this. Maybe even pause the video and then continue afterwards. But I'll show you my thoughts on what might be in this, then we'll open it up and we'll see if we're correct. So if I put this down here, and I zoom down onto it, here are my thoughts. If it used a capacitive dropper to drive a voltage supply, it'd be quite hard to monitor uh, the incoming supply voltage. And I reckon the circuitry in this will be super simple. So I reckon that the power supply will be a simple capacitor going through a diode with and uh, creating a voltage in this capacitor clamped by this senior diode with reference to this rail here. But when you use a circuit like that, because the capacitor needs that push-pull of the AC to operate correctly in this state, way, you have to add a diode like that. It's kind of an inefficient-ish circuit because it means that the capacitor is only pumping this capacitor up on the half wave. But the advantage of this circuit is that if this is live and this is neutral, then everything, including the circuitry itself, is referenced to the neutral. And it means you can measure things with respect to live. So based on that, and I could be completely wrong here, we'll find out in due course. Here's a rough idea of what I think the circuitry might be. Life came in, goes through an inrush limiting and safety resistor, a capacitive dropper, and then that simple two diode and capacitor and zener circuit to create, say, a 24 volt supply. The reason they, it's beneficial to create the higher voltage supply is that then you can use smaller components because uh, the trip coil can be higher voltage, lower current. I reckon that from that 24 volt supply, it may have a LM358 dual op amp, and I'm probably completely wrong here. 
and it may be setting with a little resistive divider from the 24 volts as a reference voltage, it may be setting sort of trip voltage levels. Then there'll be another divider going straight from the live through this resistor and forming a divider, a divided voltage so that it's scaled with reference to the mains voltage, but to be within that 24 volt supply. And that means that if it exceeded a certain level, one of these would turn on. If it went below a certain level, the other one would turn on. Through a diode, through a resistor perhaps, charge a capacitor for a time delay, maybe trigger a transistor or a thyristor to latch, um, and that would trip the coil. That would bring the coil on and trip the circuit breaker. That's my guess. But the only way to find out is to open this. So we're going to have to open it right now. Where is my drill. Let's uh, zoom back out here, but not too much. It's held together with rivets, as these things normally are. Let's see if I can not impale myself. So I shall drill these out. Hopefully the rivets won't do that thing they sometimes do and spin. They might be spinning. It does appear to be going in, so I'd hopefully be pushing the rivets out the other side. I am pushing the rivets out the other side. Knowing the Chinese experts in minimization of circuitry, there's a very good chance that I'm completely wrong. And all they're using is things like Zener diodes or even a neon indicator lamp for the upper voltage to act as a voltage threshold triggers and possibly just using transistors. Who knows? The only way we're going to find this out is to open it, which is about to happen. I'm not too worried about all the springs pinging out of this, as they often do. Let's use a pair of pliers to oh, rip the pins out. We've got one more pin at the bottom. I don't think it really matters. How sophisticated the circuit board is tiny and does not have any chips. There is the trip coil. So let's bring this little wire spacer out. There's the trip coil that's used to control this. When you set this, oh, this is one of these things that it's not going to set very easily now. The main thing is, the main thing is, there's a little plunger in here. There's a little spring -like metal plunger and that's going to go down it's going to chap that and it's going to trip the mechanism when it has to trip. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can just get this in and make it set. Can I make it set? Yes. It's, it doesn't want to set because... And then this little plunger is going to go in and it's going to strike that with... Tap it. And it, it's it's not playing because it's not... I, I can't really do this without, uh, without it being the case. Let's take a look at the circuit board then. Oh, there's not even a capacitor. What is this using? Oh, I wonder if... It's firing the coil directly across the mains. Oh, I already see what it is. It's bridging out the bridge rectifier. So it's going to be using high value resistors. And then once it detects them going right, tell you what, I'm going to take a picture of this and we shall reverse engineer it. That is very interesting. They have super simplified it to make it cheap. One moment, please. For those who want to reverse engineer this at home, I shall describe some of the important details to note. The power feeding into here, this is just a sort of looped connection. The coil is actually just connected in series with the main supply uh, to this bridge rectifier, and the other leg of the main supply goes to the other side of the bridge rectifier. And the whole principle is that when this triggers, this unit triggers actually short, shorts this bridge rectifier out with this thyristor, and that's what triggers the coil, which means that because the coil is only 60 ohms, it's going to pass an awful lot of current. It's going to pass about, in the UK, on 24 volts, about 4 amps RMS, a, a pretty much a kilowatt, but it only it's designed to just fire with a snap and actually self-disconnect. That means that you cannot uh, just connect the two wires out of this straight onto mains. It has to be on the mains after the device that this is going to trip, because if it doesn't trip it, this thing's going to go up in smoke. But that's not uncommon. That's how RCDs sometimes work as well. So we have a bridge rectifier, we have a thyristor, the thyristor that triggers it, and then we've got two sections. We've got this section down here, which is the low voltage trip, 
And then we get the high voltage strip is based on this resistor, a zener diode, and some other uh, components, capacitor and resistor. I shall show you in the schematic. Both these zener diodes are 12 volts. One is used as a threshold, one is used to actually generate a supply rail for part of the circuitry. Let's cut straight to the chase here. I have used some colour coding here just to make things easier. Let's get this out the way so it's not a distraction. I shall zoom down a bit because uh, it will help. Now, what's the best way to do this? Right, tell you what, I shall use the listing this came off. TGB1N, miniature circuit breaker, trip accessory, MV and MN, uh, over under voltage release. At the time it cost about £7.3, uh, though that is the current listing. I think it was slightly cheaper when I bought it, but the price all been changed. Goods better, but to be honest, there are, are different versions. You'd have to get the circuit breaker this matches to actually use it. But I shall fold this in half, looking at what else it's suggesting here. All very interesting stuff. Because I want to mask off part of this uh, circuitry here so we can concentrate on bit by bit. So here is the trip circuitry. We have the 60 ohm coil, that's this. And we have the main supply come in here. So it goes to the bridge rectifier and then across the output of the bridge rectifier, the positive and negative, is that thyristor with a capacitor on its gate between the, the gate and the negative rail, which is the cathode. K for cathode in this instance. It's one of these things with a cathode anode gate and the thyristors. That means that the capacitor is there to avoid nuisance triggering. It means that this has to be raised to about 0.61 volt or so, and it, just brief spikes won't affect it. This capacitor smooths that out, so it needs a decisive uh, sort of voltage level in this to trigger the thyristor. When it does, the thyristor shunts the supply, lots of current flows through that coil, it trips the mechanism and kills the power to itself, hopefully. Let's start. Ignore the blue diode, it's nothing to do with this section. This is the over voltage section, it's very simple. There is a large resistor limiting to the current, and then there's actually two resistor positions in series here so they can fine tune it. That's these two resistor positions here. But uh, there is the large resistor, 470K. And between these two resistors, they form a potential divider. And as long as the voltage doesn't go above the voltage of this 12 volt zener diode for a sh short length of time, again, there's a capacitor here to try and remove any sort of spikes and ripples. Uh, as long as the voltage doesn't go above, the divided voltage doesn't go above 12 volts, then nothing will happen. But if the mains voltage goes up so high that that divided down voltage then goes up to 12 volts, this senior diode will conduct. There's a second layer of filtering. Uh, this capacitor starts charging up. It triggers the thyristor and then it cuts the circuit breaker off because the voltage went too high. If we then look at the Low voltage, it's a bit more sophisticated. I shall cover that bit there. The main supply voltage is across these two rails, uh, but rectified, so that's the plus, and that's minus effectively, or zero volts, the zero volt reference for the whole circuit. A voltage is derived from that of 12 volts. The, this 1.2 mega ohm resistor limits the current through the zener diode, and that creates about 12 volts. And the 12 volt rail has a PNP transistor connected to it called 12Q. 12 is the number of the transistor. Q is its uh, gain range, which is about 150 to 300. Typical generic PNP transistor. This uh, transistor also, because PNP, the everything's referenced to the emitter. The base has to be pulled negative to actually turn this transistor on. And when it does, then it will switch the collector up to the positive rail. So there's a capacitor across there to avoid ripple and spikes affecting it. And then there's a potential divider. This time there are the two resistors. They fine tune it. So they get 1.2 mega ohm resistor, and then they've got a 5.1K and a 75K, and that makes up 80K. If the voltage drops too low here, it goes below that 12 volt rail uh, and as soon as it's gone below by about 0.6 volts, this transistor starts to turn on. When it does turn on, current flows, and this diode here allows, using conventional current flow theory, the current from the 12 volt rail to flow through the transistor, through that diode, and it too, after that slight filtering delay, will trigger the thyristor and uh, trip the circuit breaker off. So this thing relies, really, this capacitor here is quite important because that will allow all the rest of the circuitry to stabilise. 
Uh, because initially when you turn circuits on and they're unstable, uh, you could get false triggering. High-end systems take note. They did actually. They had a crowbar circuit that used this. Unfortunately, it didn't have this little capacitor and it caused problems. But they solved that. They put the they put that little capacitor in. It's kind of it's an important capacitor. Uh, so that's it. You've got the low voltage section and the high voltage section. The highest is the very simple. It is just that potential divider. As soon as the divided voltage exceeds 12 volts, it triggers the thyristor. This one is different. It's when the voltage, the divided voltage drops below that 12 volt rail, then it triggers this transistor, which then triggers the thy thyristor via that diode. It's actually extraordinarily simple. And as you may have noticed, I was completely wrong, thinking it was going to be well, I got a supply rail, right? The 12 volt rail. It's not a capacitive dropper. It's not anything too fancy. They went for the cheapest, simplest thing they could do, which was just very discreet circuitry with one transistor and one thyristor. It's very good. I got the thyristor right, I think, in the other drawing as well, and the voltage thresholds to a degree, but they, they didn't use the, the active chips. But there we go. It is using the dividers. It is detecting voltage thresholds, but implementing much simpler than I had thought they'd be implemented. And that's how that circuit works.